Hey guys, here is the authentication workflow that I talked about in our previous video and I want to kind of discuss some different ways you can mix this up and the advantages and disadvantages of it. So just a quick run through of how it works is you log in um, from the client passing the email and password. You get a token which you store in cookies um, and then whenever a client makes a request they send along the token and when that gets hit to the server, the server will do a couple different things. So it'll first check the validity of the JWT token, make sure it hasn't expired and use the correct secret. It'll then check um, whether the JWT is in a table where we're storing all valid JWT tokens. And then lastly, it validates the permission, whether they can, now that we know what their permission is based on the JWT body, um, we can fetch the data or throw an error if they were not permissioned. And each step, if it does not pass, we throw an error. Now, the first thing I want to talk about is right here, I'm storing the JWG token in cookies. And I'm just going to make this very generic. We don't even need to talk about just um, it returns the JWT token from the server and the client can store that um, however they want in cookies and local storage. Um, maybe do double submit with local storage and cookies. But either way, we'll just like forget about that for now. We'll set, we'll make that a separate discussion altogether. But we sum the client stores the JWT token somehow, and then each request it sends along the token somehow to the server, so the token knows what it is. All right. So now the first thing I want to talk about is using Redis. This is something you can just make to make the queries faster. That's something that would replace this component. So if I wanted to, instead of basically instead of putting in your database putting all the valid JWTs, you could put all the value, valid JWT tokens in a Redis and memory store. And the reason for that is it just makes it faster queries um, so just to speed things up. So Redis does not change anything, just tries to make faster when querying the tokens. Now one, one like kind of like method that I think is just basically strictly better than what I have here is something that uses multiple secrets. So when you sign a JWT token, you have to use a basically secret password to do so. Um, traditionally, you have basically one secret that you use to sign all the tokens that come from your server. Now instead, what you can do is you can have a secret per user. Um, so whenever you sign a token by that user, you, uh, you use their special secret. Now what you can do is have the secret actually, and the reason why you'd want to do that is because let's say one secret gets compromised, um, then it doesn't compromise everyone's tokens, only one person's token is compromised. And then that's an easy to fix. You just generate a new one for them and bam, they're off, good to the races. It doesn't mess anything up. So that's like the advantage of multiple sec secrets. And I think it's actually strictly better than what I have here. Because what you can do is I'm keeping this table in my database or in Redis of all the JWTs that are valid. But what I can do instead is instead of storing the JWT itself is store the secret that I want to use for that user or for that token. So then what I can do is whenever I want to invalidate a token I just generate a new secret for that user. Um, and then that way when I go to verify we just check against this and if we try to do a one way to fix this up here is instead of doing it like this is by just checking this. So check if the JWT is valid. We check if the secret is good. So what we'll do is it'll change this up a little bit is before we check whether the JWT is valid is we'll actually fetch that user's secret and then check whether the correct secret was used to sign. And then whenever we do an update on that user, let's say we make them an admin or we like we demote them, we don't make them an admin anymore, or any kind of permission, what we would do is we just generate a new, we give them a new token with a new secret, and so that immediately invalidates all old, old tokens. Um, so that's one nice way to do it. One disadvantage of that though is if you just want to validate maybe a token on the computer, like let's say you have two applications, um, your phone and the computer, let, let's say you don't want to invalidate both, maybe just one token. So it's not as granular. When we just swap the secret, that changes, that invalidates all tokens that user has. So that's something to be aware of. 
But I think it's just about better than checking whether the JWC is in the token. Just do a secret per user and then swap that out. Swap this piece out and then just fetch this person's secret. And again, you can store the secrets in Redis for fast queries. Now the next thing is, this is something someone mentioned and I agree with, strictly, not strictly better, but a better way than just storing the JWT tokens in the table is instead just list the JWTs that are invalid. So this is something that I actually do like and I want to just change with this, is instead of checking whether the JWT is in the table, check if JWT is in blacklist table. So basically we'll create a table with all tokens that are invalid, that we say are no longer good. Um, and so what that allows us to do is just check in that table and the table should be smaller than all the JWTs that are out there that we've issued. So that's the reason, just because the table will be smaller. And again, this table, we can put this in the database or in Redis, but just check whether the JWT is in there. And also good to note, you just want to make sure when the JWT expires that you have like some kind of cron job or something that I'll go ahead and clear old JWTs out so your blacklist table doesn't grow too big. So yeah, that's one way to increase this, just like the speed of this, is to just have us create a smaller table using blacklist instead of listing all of them. Um, and then lastly, what I want to talk about is refresh tokens. So this is something that I really like that I'm going to be using when I implement a authentication method. And the reason for that is it's kind of annoying to have to check this blacklist table every time I want to make a request. Especially if the user, you know, 99% of the time the user is, um, the, it's, their token didn't just get blacklisted, right? So one way to get around this is to basically have two tokens. One token that lasts maybe a minute, maybe two minutes. And if it's wrong, like let's say it has the wrong, th um, whatever, like you're storing in the admin privileges. If the, it gets wrong, like incorrect for some reason, it expires after a minute and it's gonna get refreshed. So you have the wrong permissions for a, a minute, which is not that big of a deal, at least for most applications. Now some are critical and this is a bad idea, but for a lot of applications, if you have the wrong token and the wrong permissions for a minute, that's not bad. And also that should really never happen where you have the wrong token. Um, this is just a corner case where you have it for a minute it's off and then you have a second token which is a refresh token which is what you use um, if the refresh token is valid this might last a week or a month or whatever you want to use the refresh token so this is a two token architecture with re doing refresh tokens is the refresh token is used if it's still valid you've basically signed in within a month um, then it goes and it will check the blacklist table where you're only storing the refresh tokens. Make sure that refresh token has not been blacklisted and you go ahead and you create a new JWT token. Um, and that's just, you know, you request this once um, every minute or so instead of requesting it every single time, which is nice. So what I'm going to be trying out is this with refresh tokens in a blacklist table. So keeping a blacklist table either in Redis or in database of all the tokens that um, are old, have been invalidated, and then what I'll do is I will just have a refresh token which they can use to get new tokens every minute. And that way we'll make this request to check whether the token is invalid every minute instead of every request. But of course we'll still do these two checks as well. But this one doesn't happen every single time now. Um, you don't have to do this, the refresh token, if you want to simplify it and don't want to worry about that extra check or if you don't care that you're doing these extra computations. But that's like a nice little trick that'll decrease how many times you have to hit the database. So that's what me trying out. I'm going to try out an implementation of that and it'll be coming out soon. And that's it for this video, guys. Let me know what you think, if there's any other recommendations you guys would have for changing up this authentication method. Uh, I'd love to hear it, or if you see any flaws in this, because I'm sure it is not perfect. But with security, it's all like relative. And sometimes, like, you can only get so secure, you're giving up freedom with the security that you give. So, 
it's important to keep that in mind. And yeah, so that's it for this video, guys. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.